Hi, my name is Stefan Balslev, and for the next few minutes, I'm going to take you through some of the changes that we've done to the Open in VS Code and GitHub projects. From the last release, you might remember that we have added the ability to explore fields and pages from VS Code using the Page Inspector. You also might remember that in the Help and Support page, you can now attach a debugger to this current session. This is the foundation for the work we've done by connecting VS Code and GitHub and extensions in Business Central for this release. So, let's consider the scenario where I have a rewards app I want to look at. So I'll go here and look at the rewards app. Let's see, we have some rewards here. I can see the list of rewards we have here and I can create a new one. And I found this card page to be a bit annoying because there is a description field that is mandatory. So I want to change this. So I can go here to the help and support and to the trusted page inspector. There we go. And from here, I can inspect this page to figure out where the different fields come from. In this case, I can see that the only extension that is in this page is the loyalty rewards demo. So I'll need to look at this one. If I go to the extension management page, I can find the app. Let's see if we can find it. It is here. The app is right here, but lo and behold, I do not have access to the source. So the resource protection policies for this app does not allow me to download a copy of the source from this app. However, if I go into the details of this app, there's a new section below here called Source Control Details. Here I can see the GitHub repo where this comes from, and I can see the con commit ID that is associated with the build of this app. So if I have access to this GitHub repo, I can now see the source from exactly the time where this app was built. And with this new action on the extension management page, you can now also open the source in VS Code. So I'm going to click that. Let's see what happens. So the first thing that VS Code is going to ask me is whether I want to open an existing repository or I want to clone it. Since I haven't done this before on my machine, I'm going to clone it. And it's going to suggest me a folder. The folder here is the project folder, so I'm going to use that one. And now it's going to start cloning the, the repository from the information that was in the application that we saw in the extension management page. The next thing that the VS Code is going to ask me is if I want to open a specific branch. I could open the branch where um, this specific uh, version of the app comes from. Or I can create a new branch if I want to make some changes. Here we know I'm going to make some changes, so let's open a new branch here. The first thing I need to do is select the branch I want to create a branch off. And in this case, I'm going to start with the main branch, and then I'm going to create a new branch called Stefan for my changes. It's going to check out the code, as we can see here. All the code from this extension is here. I can go back to the page inspector and do the explore page in VS Code to get to that specific page, or I can just find the the page here and do my changes. For example, here I would do mandatory, maybe false. So far so good. I can go to my GitHub changes and I can add a good description, commit that and publish the branch, create a pull request and then feed it back into my source management system and then we can get the whole pipelines running and the thing deployed to production. I can, of course, also test it out first if I want to do that, just by pressing F5, and then I'll get it deployed to my sandbox, and I can now see that my change is in effect. So, from the extension management page here, you now have access to the source even though you cannot download it. Of course, only if you have access to this GitHub repo. So you don't need to change the resource protection policies if you already have access to the resource, to the source code in GitHub. ALGO for GitHub automatically populates this information in extensions that are built using ALGO for GitHub. So that means that there are other extensions out there that we can see. And yes, we have access to some. We have access to a specific one called System Application, which is stored in the BC Apps repo. Again, here I can go to this app and see that is actually from the BC Apps. We can see down here in the hint and we can see a specific commit. It also means that I can actually open the source in VS Code here. So let's try that. 
This time around, it's going to ask me again if I want to open the repository, I want to clone a new version of the repository, or here I want to reopen the repository. This reopen is here because I actually have done this before. So by doing this, I don't need to clone it yet again. I'll reopen. And it's going to get me to the repo that I previously cloned, and I can start looking into the code here, maybe figure out why there's an error, and then maybe also suggest changes by creating a new branch and doing a pull request to PC apps. So, while you now can see the, the repo information in the extension management page, you may or may not have access to that repo. So you need to take care of that first. You need to make sure that the, the repo that you're cloning, you have access to, otherwise you'll get an error when cloning it. You can go explore your extension management and find other applications that may have the source information set. And if you have access to those repos, you can go clone them and expect that source. That is it for this feature. I hope you enjoyed watching. Thank you very much.